Hey everyone, welcome to the InvestorBet NRL Round 22 betting trend and preview show for all eight upcoming games this weekend. Every week in this video, I run through all the games, go through who I think is going to win and why, what I'm considering betting, what the odds are and what the odds have been in their previous meetings who's been favorite, who's been covering, what the total points line is, have their games been going over or under the total, and pretty much just an overview of all the information you need to know to make really smart betting decisions on this weekend's games in the NRL. And to do that, we're using tools, statistics, data, trends, all those kind of things like the bet finders, uh, which you'll see here. So we're not just making decisions based on, you know, our own personal opinions of teams or players. We're obviously factoring in what we see with our eye based on their performances and how they're trending, but we're backing up our decisions with uh, real life information. Uh, before we get into these games this weekend, and we'll quickly say off the top, there are a ton of over trends uh, for this weekend's games. Of the eight games, seven of them have really big over trends. Only one game has an under trend. So we're expecting to see uh, some really high scoring games previously um, based on these teams' previous matchups, which obviously will lend itself well to try scorers, uh, which the preview for the try scorers will be out on Thursday morning this weekend with uh, the Tigers-Cowboys game being played on Thursday night. I'll have that video out on Thursday morning at the latest. Um, but we'll quickly review last weekend's game. So round 21 uh, of the games last week, four went over, four went under the total points line. Uh, but importantly here, our favorites won six of the eight games. There are only two underdogs who won. Bulldogs beat the Broncos. And then the uh, Titans beat the Dolphins as the other underdog to win outright. Pretty much since round 17. So for the past five weeks, favorites have now started winning games to uh, bring back the overall record. Uh, if we look at the overall record now, favorites have won 93 games. And uh, what the interesting thing here is, and this is something we've covered um, throughout the season, is favorites when they're only uh, half a point to minus six. I've uh, only won 33 games and lost 41 in that situation. But as soon as they're a favorite minus six and a half or more, uh, they've won 60 and only lost 21 games. And through here, you can go through and break down like which teams have contributed to that and how the, each team stacks up. Uh, pretty much the Sharks and... The Warriors, the only two teams have really struggled, and also the Eels on three occasions have a losing record as um, a favorite more than a converted try. Uh, also, last weekend, favorites covered four of the eight games. So, pretty much, favorites underdogs went four and four against the spread, um, but favorites won more of the games outright, which you would expect. And then uh, the other interesting thing from last weekend's games is the away sides covered six of the eight games, only two home teams covered. And they were uh, the Canberra Raiders against the Rabbitohs and also the Cowboys on Saturday night against the Sharks. All other away teams cover the spread in their games. So now uh, looking ahead to this weekend's games, firstly, Thursday night, Tigers at home to the North Queensland Cowboys. Cowboys have had two games at home, um, now go on to the road. The Cowboys are in pretty good form at the moment and they still have plenty to play for. Currently sixth on the ladder. And this is definitely an important game for them to win, obviously to cement their spot inside the top eight. Uh, currently sitting sixth, Tigers last on the ladder. Uh, Cowboys have won three the past four versus the Tigers and covered the past two against them. Uh, both big wins. Uh, firstly, in round 12 at home this year, 42 to 28. And then late last year, um, getting revenge from when the Tigers won at this venue, 66 to 18. So last time the Cowboys played here, they were hammered as two and a half point favorites, uh, losing 66 to 18. Um, but since then did uh, win comfortably both games against the, uh, against the Tigers up in North Queensland. Ex expect... Um, the Cowboys to win this game and win it fairly comfortably. Um, they have won seven of their past nine games. Tigers on a five-game losing streak. They picked up a couple of wins um, at home, uh, but since then have really struggled. And I don't see them getting over the line here against the Cowboys, especially uh, coming back from a trip to New Zealand last week. Um, definitely not an ideal situation for them. So Cowboys to win. Not super keen on the minus 10 and a half. If I had to pick a side to cover the spread, I'd lean towards the Cowboys, but it's not one I really want to get involved in betting in. However, I do think the Cowboys 
uh, win the game comfortably. From a total perspective, at 51 and a half, seven of the past eight heads head have gone over, including the past five games. And so I'm definitely leaning towards the overs in this matchup. And I feel like the way the kind of the games have set up this week, there are a lot of games where you can kind of play the favorite to win outright and then um, multi it up with a total uh, where adjusted total line and bring it down from what the current total is. So you could play, for example, in this game, the Cowboys at $1.32 into a total points line of over 42 and a half or 43 and a half, for example. So you're um, getting that total down with a strong selection based on which team is going to win the game. Because I think Cowboys win this comfortably and it's a high scoring game. And therefore, like both of those angles are likely to hit. So that's how I'm considering playing the opening game. Warriors take on the Eels. This is the early game on Friday night. Not really um, a super exciting game. Uh, Eels well and truly out of it. Uh, Warriors still in with some hope. And I think they get the job done in this game against the Eels. Um, they've covered five of the past six. However, uh, Parramatta have won four of the past five. But Warriors should be too good. Back-to-back -back home games here. They got over the Tigers last week by 12 points. Uh, they probably should have covered the spread in that game uh, with the Tigers going in for a late try to get the cover, uh, whereas the Eels have now lost six games in a row and they've only won one of their past 12, and that was a win against the Sharks, 34-22. to Without Mitch Moses again, Warriors should be way too good at home. Uh, you also have a strong overtrend in this game. 11 of the past 14 head-to-head -head have gone over. Once again, including all of the past five. We do have a higher total than previous meetings, up to 49 and a half. Uh, all the previous meetings um, have been in the mid-40s to low-40s. We had a 47 and a half, but that was at Suncorp Stadium, which generally is a stadium that gets slightly higher totals. Um, but I think this is another game you could play. Like, double-digit line for the Warriors you know, is a little bit risky. They're not a super strong attacking side, averaging just over 20 points a game, but they are going up against the second worst defensive side in the Eels. And um, they will win the game. It's kind of a question how much they win by. Um, so this is another matchup where I'd be interested in uh, the Warriors on the money line. I'd even potentially take them up to a minus three and a half, minus five and a half. And then uh, also on the total line, bring that number down a little bit. Um, you could also play the Warriors team total in this game. Um, so there's kind of a number of ways I'm considering playing it, but um, majority of it all around the Warriors to win, win comfortably, and it to be a higher scoring game. The late game on Friday night, the Dolphins take on the Roosters, and they're playing this game over in Perth. So um, just purely based on that, you can expect a higher scoring game. Um, so another one where I'm slightly leaning towards the overs, uh, the Roosters are in good form. They have now won four of their past, uh, five of the past six games, sorry, with the only loss against the Melbourne Storm. And they got over the Seagulls last week by four points for a team in really good form. Whereas the Dolphins, for a team who started the season uh, really well, have now only won two of their past eight games. And those wins were against the Rabbitohs and Cronulla Sharks, uh, both by smallish margins. Expect the Roosters to win this game. Um, they're definitely the in-form side, uh, but I think we're going to see another higher scoring game here. So another one where I'm leaning in both of those angles. Uh, Roosters to win, and I don't know if I'd take them to cover the minus nine and a half. Um, I feel like it's this line is just slightly higher than it should be. Um, they did comfortably beat the uh, Dolphins 30 to 14 as 10 and a half point favorites at home. Um, but both those meetings were last year and they haven't met this season. And obviously playing in Perth at a neutral venue uh, doesn't really advantage either side. Um, but do expect the Roosters to get the job done. They're the number one attacking side and currently third ranked defensive side. Uh, whereas the Dolphins are slightly below them in both of those categories. So I feel like the line is slightly higher than it should be. But however, I feel like it is a little bit justified due to the Dolphins form of recent times. Um, but I do also think it's going to be a high scoring game. So leaning towards the Roosters and also the overs in that game. Titans versus Broncos. Uh, Broncos minus six and a half. I find it pretty hard at the moment to lay six and a half points for the Broncos, the way they're playing. They're just a team that's really, really out of form. Uh, season's pretty much slipped away. Whoever loses this game based on where they currently stand is completely out of the race. Pretty much if they're not already, um, you could say both these sides would be very difficult for them to make the eight from this position. But whoever loses, definitely well and truly um, out of it. But either way, they still need results to go their way. 
uh, at home here for the Titans. Uh, they met not that long ago. It was round 12, um, and it was at Suncorp Stadium. The Broncos were 12 and a half point favorites, and the Titans won that game outright, 36 to 34. Uh, Titans have also won the past two against Broncos, both at Suncorp. They last met at Seabus, so on the Gold Coast in round 7, 2023. Broncos were eight and a half point favorites that day, won 43 to 26. Uh, this matchup, eight of the past 11 head to head have gone over. Um, I'm a little bit nervous taking the overs uh, for this game, even though, like, historically, this matchup tends to favor it. Um, but if I had to pick a way to go, I'd lean towards the over. But this total at 52.5 is just a little bit too high for me. I'd probably have it at the 49.5 to make it a bet in the over. Um, so I'm happy to stay away from it at that stage. Um, but I'm definitely interested in the Titans plus 6.5 here. I think they really push the Broncos. Broncos, as I said, just... Really, really out of form at the moment. Um, they've only won one of their past eight games against Newcastle when they won 30 points to 14. Um, Titans have now won uh, four of their past five games with the only loss uh, to the inform Manly Seagulls. And um, I think just with more than a converted try at home, um, they're the side that I'd definitely be leaning towards in this game uh both sides are very very evenly matched um especially in attack there's not a great deal between them in any key metric and then uh defensively broncos a slightly better side um but not a great deal and i feel and also the tigers numbers are slightly inflated defensively due to how they started the season the only real concern i have is uh the titans record at home uh they're only winning 33 percent of matches at home this season however uh broncos haven't really been all that great on the road either then on to the storm versus dragons storm big favorites here minus 18 and a half they've won the past three against the dragons and they've scored 38 42 and 44 in those meetings they only meet once per season last time they met round 25 last year um storm are generally big double digit favorites for this matchup minus 16 and a half and then at home they were minus 23 and a half um last time that was round 9 2022 so uh pretty much three converted tries here um this is a like the kind of line where i just stay away from it i spoke last week in the games last week where we took the Storm at the minus and also Penrith at the minus that I really try and pick my spots where I, where I take a double digit line or a favorite throughout the season because um, you don't want to be taking too many of them. Um, this is one where I feel like it's just a couple of points too high. If it was minus 13 and a half, then it would definitely be a bet. Um, even minus 15 and a half, I could stretch it but out to minus 18 and a half. Um, I'm just happy to stay away from it. Don't need to force a bet into this game. I think, obviously, Storm win, win comfortably, should get the job done. Uh, this matchup does have a big history of overs. Seven of the past eight head-to-head -head have gone over, including the past four. Um, but once again, we're getting a total at six points higher than the last meeting. And kind of the thing with the total is if um, it's to go over this number, then the Storm are very likely to cover the spread as they're the number four defensive side and the Dragons are ranked 14th. So the majority of the points are going to have to come through the Storm here. And then when we look at their total points line, it's in the mid 30s. So we're going to need them to score pretty much six converter tries to go over that number. Um, so it, pr pretty much with the way the odds are currently, I'd have this total uh, two to three points lower for it to be a bet on the over. Um, but as it currently stands, just going to stay away from this matchup. But lean towards it being high scoring and um, Storm to win the game comfortably. Sharks versus Rabbitohs. Uh, Sharks are a team who uh, really do need to win this game. They're uh, currently sitting in fourth uh, with the Bulldogs and Cowboys uh, both hot on their heels and both of those sides are big favorites going into this weekend's game. So uh, definitely a really important matchup. And then you also have um, the Seagulls who have the bye this week. So um, if the Sharks drop this game, um, they putting themselves in a little bit of a tricky position. They are 10 and a half point favorites and they've won the past two against the Rabbitohs. Uh, the latest round six this season, 34 to 22 as 10 and a half point favorites. Um, at home uh, this week, I think they win and win comfortably. Um, another team that's favorite. There's not really many underdogs where you can give them a strong hope of winning as outside really the Titans and potentially in the last game of the round. This weekend is the only other game where the underdog you feel like has a somewhat genuine chance of winning the game. Rabbitohs were playing pretty well, but 
Uh, they kind of fell apart a little bit last week against uh, Canberra, and now they've lost two of their past three with the only win against the Tigers, and they conceded 28 points in that game. So the Sharks at home should win and win comfortably. Minus 10 and a half. Uh, to be honest, I really don't mind this line. I feel like there's going to be a lot of people looking at this matchup and just going, uh, the Sharks, you know, they're not in good form. You know, they've only won one of their past five games, which was against the Tigers as well. The other thing I'm considering for the Sharks is uh, last week against the Cowboys, uh, they came out into that game really, really flat. So it was off the bye on the road against an informed Cowboy side. And you just tell in the first half, that was very, very flat. They were without uh, Will Kennedy and Nico Hines. And so going into that game um, and like just during the first 20, 30 minutes and the Sharks have historically kind of been um, slow starters this season. Um, but just the way they're playing, it's just something looked off about it. Um, and the Cowboys um, ended up winning the game by eight points. It wasn't a blowout by any means. Um, but the Sharks never really looked all that likely of winning the game. The Rabbitohs are just really, really poor against uh, Canberra last week. Um, Sharks get an extra day's rest coming into this one as well. And I think they win and win comfortably. Another game um, that does favor the over. Six of the past eight heads head have gone over. Uh, both these sides consistently involved in high scoring matches. We bring up the total record overall on the season. The Sharks are 10 and 8 to the over, 6 and 3 to the over at home. And then the Rabbitohs, 10 and 8 to the over overall, and 6 and 3 to the over. Um, away from home. But definitely be leaning towards another high scoring matchup here. And uh, those are the two ways I'm considering playing this game. Then the Panthers versus Knights, as I said, there was one game which did favor um, and have an under trend. And this is the one seven of the past 10 head to head have gone under. Panthers, big favorites, dollar 18, minus 14 and a half. Total at 48 and a half is higher than the past five meetings. And the past three have all gone under that number. Uh, Newcastle are a team that does struggle to score. They're the lowest scoring side in the league, which doesn't stack up well going up against uh, the best defensive side. I'll bring up the bet finders here. If we look at this game, you'll notice here, uh, Newcastle uh, averaging 17.7, ranked worst in the league. And then Panthers, number one defensive side, uh, only conceding 15.3 points per game. Based off of that, I think it's going to be very hard for uh, the Knights to put up enough points in this game to win. So Penrith will be winning. Um, also, um, do like the Knights team total to go under in this matchup. The past three, uh, or you could even go past four, actually, against Penrith, they've scored six points, 15, 12, and 18. So haven't scored over 18 at all during that time. Um, they only met round 15 um, this season. And the Panthers were 11 and a half point favorites, won by eight points, but I can't see um, Newcastle. If we can get an under 16 and a half on their team total. Uh, that's the way I'm most likely to be betting this game as I do think they're going to struggle to score. Penrith have won eight of the past nine versus Newcastle, and there was a draw in there. So Knights haven't won any of those past nine games. However, they have covered two of the past three, but uh, Penrith will get the job done, win comfortably, um, but most likely playing this game is the Knights team total to go under just due to their lack of attack. And also if we look through uh, their recent record of how they've been performing, um, they've only scored 14 in their last game prior to the bye against Brisbane, prior to that six points against Manly, 16 against Canberra. And then they did put up 34 points against an Eel side who's up near the worst defensive side in the league. Um, so I feel like that's the best play in that game. Then final game of the round, Bulldogs minus eight and a half against Canberra. Both sides coming off a really big wins last week. Bulldogs uh, putting up 41 points against the Broncos and then Canberra putting up 32 points uh, against South Sydney Rabbitohs. At, back at home, Bulldogs had two road games in a row. They played the Cowboys. Then they came down and played the Broncos. Now back at home. Bulldogs should get the job done here and win. I don't think there's a ton of value in them at all, though. I feel like this line at minus eight and a half is pretty much spot on. Could have it down to a seven and a half, um, but I feel like it's right in the range where it really should be. And there's, there's nothing super exciting about having a bet on that or a ton of value, I should say, about betting into that. What is interesting when I was going through um, the history between these two sides is the Raiders have won the night past nine versus Bulldogs, and they have covered three of the past four. So even though Bulldogs, you know, have been the better side overall this season and should be winning this game, um, Canberra definitely have a good record against them. Um, and realistically, like when you look at the stats for these sides, 
Um, it's the defense that separates them. The Bulldogs, the number two defensive side, Canberra ranked 12th overall. And in attack, they're very, very even. Bulldogs at home should get the job done and win. Um, at a dollar 38, there are potential like where you could multi them up with another side. But I think it's a weekend where um, favorites should be winning the majority of games um, outside um, the Titans, as I mentioned. I want to say right now as well that I'm recording this on Tuesday morning, so our full teams aren't out for these games as of yet, but I like to put these video out, videos out as early as I possibly can for you guys um, so you can already start considering what you're going to be betting on into these games. Um, and I, like, I pride myself on like actually doing the research early, putting the information out there as opposed to you know making last minute decisions. Um, so once lineups are out, that's when I'll record the try score preview for the games coming up this weekend. Um, so that'll be out on Thursday morning. But um, this is the way I'm considering playing the majority of these games. So just quickly recap uh, exactly what I'm considering betting in each of these matchups really quickly. So Thursday night, I like the Cowboys to win and also leaning towards the over. Uh, Warriors versus Eels early game on Friday like the Warriors to win, also like the over. Dolphins, Roosters, Roosters, and also the over in that game. I feel like there's a lot of matchups where everything's kind of pushing towards that direction. Like the Titans, plus six and a half against the Broncos. Also, we get a lower number on the total. I think that's a good option for an over in that game. Storm versus Dragons, uh, pretty much a stay away game for me, that one. But do you think the Storm win? And wouldn't be surprised if they rack up a score against the Dragons like they have in the past three. Sharks versus Rabbitohs. Um, like the Sharks at the minus 10 and a half. Also think this could be another high scoring game as well based on their previous meetings uh, with the winner pretty much scoring a high score in both of the, all of those games. Uh, Panthers, Knights, like the Knights team total to go under if we can get a 16 and a half. And Bulldogs versus Raiders, um, nothing I'm super keen on in this game. I do think Bulldogs win though. Um, so something with them on the money line paired with something else in that game. Um, so that's how I'm considering playing it. Try score preview will be out at the end of the weekend if you want uh, all my bets. And also if you want to use the bet finder tools that we're using here to go through, analyze the games, consider, you know, which teams you want to back and actually do the research. Because um, the thing is, is you can make money betting on sports if you research properly. Like the reason people lose is pretty much two reasons. Number one is they don't do enough research or pretty much any research, you know, they rely on social media, their friends or random things they see for tips, or even they just follow what's the betting companies are telling them they should bet on. Or the other thing is they just bet super emotionally. They don't have a structure with how they're betting, you know, what they're staking, how many bets they're putting on, what they're, you know, what bets they're actually choosing to put on. And it's all driven by emotion. So when they get a winner, they put more on the next game. When they get a loser, they're in a rush to quickly put the next bet on to try and get a winner. And um, that just causes a cycle that causes you to lose long term. So, you know, if you're in that situation, definitely check out. Um, there's a video on the channel I posted a couple of weeks ago of how to turn your betting around, which goes through like the strategies you can follow to make money betting on sports and also touches on a little bit of horse racing as well. Um, but that video will give you the foundation of you know what your betting structure should look like uh, in order for you to actually be making money out of doing this. Because obviously um, it's something super fun, but it's not that fun when you're losing money. So um, you want to kind of double down on it, have it be fun, and you also make money from doing it. But I made all the bet finder tools available for everyone to use. Um, this season, this is what's helped me make a full-time income betting since 2012. And I've been building these uh, different bet finders for the different sports since 2014 to give me the ability to do the research because I pretty much got quickly and <laughs> like got tired of using um, like the sports websites to try and do research. Like if we look at this Tigers Cowboys game and this is like, this is 2024. So this is, you know, more than 10 years after I started doing this and we look at kind of the team stats, we see who's been winning, uh, what the past two, their past five games, and then uh, a few stats of how they've been performing, like how many points scored, points conceded overall on the season, uh, average points scored. So basically the same stat as above if you just don't calculate it, and then their wins overall. And that's pretty much everything that you get to look at uh, for their statistics. 
whereas the bet finders show you all the stats you need to know for the upcoming game in a really easy way. See how they stack up against each other in all the key metrics in attack and also in defense. See which team's better in that category and by how much and also where they stack up in terms of the overall uh, full league of the NRL. And this is just one of the tools you can go through the games for next week's matches as well to get a look ahead. Then we have the try scorer matches uh, for this and there's you know, over 20 different tools you can use to go through and research the game. So if you haven't already, definitely click the link in the description, check it out, um, start using it for this weekend's games. And like, I know for sure if you use this and use it consistently, uh, when you join up, you also get training of how to actually use this. So it's not overwhelming. It's very, very um, easy for you guys to use. Click the link in the description, check it out for yourself and hope you guys have a great weekend. Uh, make it a winning one and definitely stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe for the TriScore video uh, that's coming out later this week.